Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. Tuesday, and all of our guests, including Dan Dudley, the standing by, are brought to you by the Bayside Oceanfront Resort. Book your stay at the Bayside and enjoy the many amenities the hotel has to offer, such as oceanfront rooms, free parking, oceanfront restaurant, cafe, indoor and outdoor swimming pools, gym, and more. Call 250-248-8333 or go to their website, BaysideResortParksville.com. Calm. Just before we get to Dan, Delaney's okay. Tyre and Langley inbox from Tanbeer. Rick's at a loss for words. He can't imagine McKayev and Lindholm. He can't blame McKayev <laughs> and Lindholm on the last regime. Another good point by Tanbeer out there. Yeah, keep reading that guy's uh, uh, text. Well, I know you enjoy yeah, Well, you them. won't get smarter by reading them, Don. <laughs> You're not going to get smarter. See, it's sensitive. You're sensitive about it. We'll talk more about guy's, it later. He's an idiot. He's we'll, just an idiot. We'll talk more about it later. Let's bring in uh, the voice of the Sabres in town tonight uh, to take on the Canucks at Rogers Arena, uh, Dan Dunleavy. Broadcasting veteran, how are you, sir? I'm good, thank you. Um, I'm curious who the idiot is a little bit, but I'm afraid <laughs> to ask. I'm a, I'm a little bit afraid to ask. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not you, okay? So let's let's start there. Hey, hey, Dan. Oh, okay. yeah, oh, join yeah. the club. Join the club. Yeah. Uh, yeah Sabres, yeah. Sabres over Seattle, six-two uh, last night, pushing for a playoff spot. Uh, four points out of a playoff spot. And what can you? And man, I'm, I'm telling you, it's been a while. 2011 since they made the playoffs. What can you tell us about the Sabres' belief level at this point? Yeah. Um, interesting question. I think. Um, from the players' perspective, I think they they have a lot of belief that they certainly have the ability to make a continued run here. I mean, evidence from even the teams are about to play through what is normally known as a bit of a gauntlet for Eastern teams, as you know, whether it's California or coming out to Western Canada. But so far this year, uh, obviously played the Canucks very tight at home earlier this season, so there's confidence going into the game tonight uh, against a Vancouver team that's extremely dangerous. They're well aware of that. Um, but you know, they, they dusted off a little bit of a, <laughs> it's funny at the end of the game last night, it was the first win over Seattle. Now mm. you're, you're talking, you're talking six games in, right? We're not talking about a 253 game all-time series where you just haven't won a hockey game, but, um, little things like that, I think for this group are important right now. So the belief is definitely there. A lot of it has to do with, I'm sure some of the questions you're going to ask going forward with respect to goaltending and, and keeping goals against down. Um, goal scorers can get hot and streaky. Jeff Skinner seems to be back on the right side of that now over the last little stretch, so that's good news for him. But uh, to answer your question a little more directly and not drag it out any longer than I have, there is there is confidence there, yeah. Yeah, and Dan, I imagine part of that confidence uh, might come from the acquisition of Bowen Byram. And, of course, a lot of people uh, here follow Bowen because he played junior hockey for the Vancouver uh, Vancouver Giants. How is he fitting in so far? Yeah, well, then you 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 already know the answer to the question. I mean, he stepped right into the lineup, and I mean, statistically, you can see that he's been putting up points already. But he's playing with Rasmus Dahlin, and right out of the gate to have those two extremely talented, puck-carrying, offensive-minded defensemen on the ice at the same time obviously cause uh, any team problems. And it doesn't have to be to the extent that either is putting up massive points in a game. What it's doing for a guy like Rasmus to have – uh, Bowen here is that Rasmus does not have to be a 29 minute a night guy like he was before Bowen showed up as Buffalo was trying to make a push here on the stretch and also during those 29 minutes literally have to be the guy with a puck on a stick every single minute now that is I know it's commonplace uh, you know for your uh, your blue chip defenseman in the National Hockey League but it certainly is nice with a guy that's still in Rasmus's case to have this much experience in the league at such a young age to have someone there that can share the load and just not have him get to a point where not really physical fatigue, but maybe mental fatigue for trying to do it all was really on his shoulders. So you bring uh, Byram in here and he's ready, willing and able give me the puck. I'll, I'll gain the zone for you. We'll get entry there. Rasmus, you can go set up somewhere else, maybe on the wall where they're not expecting you to be. So his talents alone are enough, obviously to welcome what he brings to the hockey club, but it's really what he's doing and creating things for other players already and not even forcing it. Again, you've seen him play out here. He's, he's just being himself. And it's, um, it's, it's a big, big part of what the Sabres 
uh, need going forward, whether they, you know, continue this climb or not to get to a playoff spot. Certainly really looking forward to seeing him for full seasons here for a long, long time. Dan, you have another kid from these neck of the woods on your roster. Uh, boy, oh boy, Zach Benson, only one of four kids from the draft last year that are playing in the NHL this year. Kid's only 18, uh, nine goals, 14 assists. Tell us how he has been this year. First of all, he never stops smiling, so I just yeah. love being around him. I mean, you know, obviously at 18 and being in the NHL, why wouldn't you smile? So, But the reality for Zach Benson is um, hockey-wise, he just – at such a young age to make the right decision constantly when he engages in puck battles. And he does. Uh, when that puck is deep in the offensive zone, he's down below the goal line. He's often on the right side of the battle, meaning even if he loses uh, a puck battle on the wall, he's still in good position to recover and get back and be on the right side of the play. Um, you know, offensively, I think he's still trying to find his way around the game here. And at 18, of course, is going to be the answer to that. Uh, but by that, I mean he's not coming in with a blistering shot necessarily, but he certainly is schooling himself on how he can jump into holes and just look for areas on the ice that kind of happen with his own positioning and just reading the play. And he did it the other night where he was in a little bit tight on goal. He realized how the play was developing. He just popped back a couple of feet, um, and goal scorers do this. I know you got a lot of them here in Vancouver. They just find that space. And he drifted back into it, puck got onto his stick, and he whipped it in really quick. Now, uh, again, not the hardest shot, but quick release as soon as it was on his stick, and he knew where he was putting it. So he's had a lot of moments like that where he's got opportunities in front of the goal. I like where he's going with and without the puck, and it doesn't matter what I like. Certainly Don Granato speaks about uh, Benson's play glowingly really since day number one, and it's true. You guys know when you're up top calling a game, you can see things developing, and you yeah. know when someone, oh, this is going to be trouble here. I don't think we've said that once about Zach, where, oh, this kid's in trouble right now, or this young man's in trouble. He just plays the game smart. Dan, uh, it's been a tough 10 years here, you know, but we're going back to the playoffs this year, uh, the Canucks are, but I, I, I think of Buffalo a lot. 12 years, no playoffs. Such a wonderful hockey market. That fan base... Boy, what they've gone through, Dan, uh, and, they, and that's a great hockey town, by the way, and uh, I, I feel for those fans sometimes. Yeah, it's an educated hockey town, too, as you well know. Um, you know, they're very aware of the drought, and they're also probably more aware of a lot of the reasons that the drought has occurred, and I think that's something that Kevin Adams, so I, I don't think I know, that current GM Kevin Adams is really – trying to make sure it doesn't happen again. And by that, I mean just where you're dusting off coaches when you go through a tough stretch because other teams are dusting off coaches. If you really believe that the message from your coach is still the right message and it's up to the players to execute, then you start looking at your personnel. If you think that you've got the right personnel and the messaging's not right from your coach, I think that's the point in time when a lot of GMs uh, slash owners will say, maybe we need a new voice in there. And over the years, when things have not gone uh, in the Sabres' favor, there have certainly been some rightful, uh, many would say, changes in coaching regimes. And I think at other times, too, maybe there's been a bit of a rush to put a new voice in the room to change things. Um, whoever was being listened to at the time, certainly I'm not privy to that. But there's some stability here that Kevin's tried to offer the players and put the onus on them to take their game to the next level, which is interesting for this group, guys, because last year um, – a lot of these guys at a very young stage in their career, whether it be due to injury and lack of games played, you know, for example, Tage Thompson's case, um, they had career years really early on. And to bounce back and, you know, have another 30 goal season, have a 47, maybe a 50 goal season, um, you know, have another 40 goal campaign, as I just think of the players who really had red hot years last year, to come back and do it again when teams start to figure out who you are a little bit, it's not easy. So, I think the onus this year was more on, and even during the struggles, was on the players to look, you guys, you've got to figure this out. I mean, last year, not saying it came easy to you, but everybody had a career year. So in the seasons that you don't, you got to find a way to that other style of game that you can clamp down on things a little bit. And they've done that lately. The goals against are down. So when you're not scoring, 
you've got to find a way to play better defensive hockey, and they've done that certainly late. And a big part of that has been the guy in net in Uko Pekalukana. Yeah, uh, but I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Dan. V- very quickly here, uh, Devin Levi will get the start tonight uh, up from Rochester. Uh, there was a time when he was believed to be the next great Canadian goaltender. Where, where's his game at? Well, it's. Um, uh, I'm going to say peaks and valleys. The valleys haven't been low, though. I mean, I think the valleys have been realistically expected for any goaltender coming into the National Hockey League, um, you know, via the route that he did. And I really think that the time in Rochester, uh, both stints, uh, will have served him very well. Uh, that's the easiest thing to say when you follow hockey. But just to keep playing and get a continuous rhythm to your game. You know, up here, Uko Pekalukadin has clearly put his foot down on I am your number one guy. He's not allowing more than two goals a game. He's fighting away the big fella um, on numerous breakaways to make saves. He comes out to challenge. He's 6'6". He's still big. You guys have seen it. Uh, you've had big goaltenders here that get jobs done and uh, just kind of grow into the game. So for Devin, uh, when he gets opportunities, he just has to – play his game and continue to figure this league out. And there's nights where he does. He absolutely stones guys and um, he has them baffled. He's a, how do I put it? I was not going to say he's a, a puck challenger, but he, he's going to come out and meet you. He's not going to wait on you. He's going to come out and meet you. And he's got really quick reflexes, like all the goaltenders, all the good ones anyway. <laughs> um, so yeah, he's an interesting case to watch grow. Um, and he's a very determined, very focused young man. That's for sure. Dan above and beyond. We sure appreciate it. All, all the best. Thanks for doing this so much. Hey, well, Buffalo fans appreciate uh, everything in Vancouver. Uh, go Canucks. And uh, hopefully we meet you in there. We squeak in and uh, we'll be back here in a few yeah. Uh, what eight weeks or so? Yeah. <laughs> you got it. Stanley Cup final. Yeah. Two All right. Teams that spun the wheel will go in the Stanley Cup yeah. final. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. The yeah, wheel. I remember. The wheel. I remember it well. That's how old I am. Yeah. Nineteen seventy. Right. Thanks for this, Dan. Okay. All right. Cheers.